Hi, it's Tom here from FDS and today we are going to be looking at Nerf mod motors. It's been a while since I did a mod motor update and uh, 2016 saw a lot of new and interesting motors hit the market. So I thought I would do a 2017 edition of my mod motor video so you guys can see what's going on and uh, what motors are available. Now there are one or two motors missing from this lineup and I'll come to those as I get through. Uh, we are going to start with the stock motors manufactured by Nerf. So we've got from left to right a um, barricade and then we've got a rapid strike and a strife motor. These are subtly different wines. Uh, strife motors are happier at a slightly higher voltage. Rapid strike motors are really a 2S and uh, these are slightly higher torque. They're not quite as good as um, Rhinos or the old Falcons, um, but the barricade motors do have a bit of torque in them. However, they are a metal brush, they're not a carbon brush. So all of these are metal brush motors. And uh, people often ask, what motors can I use with IMR? Well, I'll give you the answer, stock ones. Stock Rapid Strike, Stock Strife, or any of the equivalents. Um, in the Rapid Strike, you can't use 14500 IMR cells because they are not powerful enough. So if you are going to go with IMRs as a choice, you are pretty much limited to only standard flywheel motors and really only semi-automatics. So we've got that out of the way, and then we come on to some of the other 130 motors. Uh, two motors commonly asked about, the RM2, which is a motor from back in 2012. I'll tell you what to do with the RM2, do that with the RM2, throw it in the nearest bin. Uh, the other one is, what about Tamiya Torque Tuned? Okay, they are a 1S motor, which means their maximum forward voltage is under 3.8 volts. Ideally a little bit lower than that, and um, we've been over those previously. Here's what you do with those. They're no use either. Um, 1S motors need twice as much current as an equivalent 2S, um, and sometimes even more an equivalent 3S motor to produce the same torque. All of those don't have the torque for Nerf applications, and you might as well not bother. You're gonna have to rewire anyway. There's no point in messing with 1S. This brings us to uh, other 130 motors. So we have an SR Shark 40s, and there's also a Shark 30. Three, um, a couple of other ones, slot car motors. Um, these were tried way back in the day too. Um, these generally have good quality neo magnets, hot wines, variety of different choices. Some of them come with twin axles. You can see this one's been chopped off. This is a really old one. This comes from the world's first properly fully modified rapid strike, AKA Raja. BSUK serial number 001. Uh, I can safely say those aren't worth bothering with anymore. Don't put them in the skip. They might be useful for something. Pushers, some people use them for, as they have quite talk, good talk. Um, and now we come on to um, the successor to the Michel motor, which is called the Banshee. And unfortunately, these have gone no longer available. You can see they've got a really nice long shaft on them, and they're actually quite a nice motor. The problem with those is that they've been replaced by that, which looks to me like a generic, crappy metal brush shell. God alone knows what the spec of this motor is. I got sent five of these when I wanted some Banshees. Banshees were really good for pushers, and they're not ideal for flywheel motors. So Banshees are now dead, officially. So you can consider the Banshee to be dead. That brings us on to the other 130 motors on the test. The Artifact 130 motor, which I think you'll agree looks extremely similar in case design and, and shaft length to the Banshee. However, it is a little bit longer. If you look, you can see the case is actually a little bit longer than the Banshee and if you compare it to a stock 130 you can see the case is quite a lot longer so you have to watch out for that it's almost like a two and a half size motor be careful about that because obviously if you've got tight shell clearance that is going to get in the way when you put it into the um, motor block so just be aware that your shell clearance is going to be much tighter with those I haven't tested these uh, the specs available on these are terrible, which is a common problem with um, some of the Chinese generics, is that they just don't have reliable data sheets. The data sheet says 50,000 RPM, which for Nerf use is kind of pointless. Uh, that brings us on to the bottom of the MTB family, the 130 range. And here we have the MTB Rhino, which is probably the best general purpose 130 motor available in Nerf today. Um, it's relatively inexpensive, it produces good torque, and it's easy to get hold of when Ryan gets his ordering organized and it also um, performs very well. You can get 110 feet per second out of this on standard wheels. They don't break down very often. You get eight DPS uh, as a pusher on a rapid strike. Also, the advantage about these is they're a 3S motor and that makes them um, very efficient on current. And I'll explain that in a minute. 
Um, there is also the MTB uh, Honey Badger, which I don't have any of at the moment because I sold all my stock that I had. Uh, the Honey Badger is designed to be a high-speed pusher motor. It's not really a great flywheel motor. Um, I've used them a couple of times for things that I want to deliberately depower a little bit. It makes a nice loud noise. It's a little hot for a flywheel motor. So I wouldn't recommend them as a 2S flywheel motor. Obviously the Black Pig is still available. Those are expensive. I don't have any at the moment. There is also the Black Rice motor, which is inbound for testing, which I think may be similar, which is another Chinese motor. And uh, I'll have test data on those shortly. Now we step up the next level to 180 motors. And uh, obviously absent from here is the XP180. Uh, the XP180 has a short shaft, slightly shorter even than the blade. Those are a bit problematic for 3S users. Uh, MTB have done a video about that if you want to see why. And I'll come to the MTB motors first. So we have the MTB Hellcat, which is a 3S 180 motor. Produces huge torque, these. Um, and again, a nice long um, shaft here to take the flywheels. So a good flywheel retention on those. Um, and again, because it's a higher voltage, the current use is lower for more torque. That brings us to the 2S motor which is the MTB Wolverine. This is a ridiculous motor for current consumption. It was designed to basically be a 180 version of the Honey Badger. It produces quite a lot of torque, but at huge current cost. These peak out at around 40 amps each. I wouldn't recommend using these as a, as a flywheel motor myself. I don't really see the point in having such vast current consumption when you could just use a Hellcat and you could stay under under 30 amps a motor and get pretty much the same performance. They were designed to use in conjunction with Hellcats for flamethrower builds as a pusher motor. They're probably quite good in a 2S as a pusher motor. Uh, just be aware of those stall currents. The uh, MTB 180s, I have been a couple of issues with those and I'm going to demonstrate now um, one of the problems that I found with Hellcats and I don't know whether this has happened to any of the other MTB motors. I've never had it with Rhinos. So I've got my little test pack. I'm just going to show you if you listen. Now, if you hear that horrible rough bearing noise compared to that one, which again isn't that good, I don't think. Um, and if we put a rhino on there, you'll hear what they should sound like. Now, I've had some of those Hellcats with such high bearing noise that I couldn't ship them to customers because people don't want to get a motor that sounds like it's going to melt itself. Um, I think the issue is down to this uh, snout bearing here. Um, you can use a tiny, tiny pinprick of oil to lubricate them. Um, but I didn't take any chances with those in terms of shipping to customers, and that's why I've got them all. I have had one of these um, subsequently melt afterwards when I was testing, which I think may have been to do with the bearing overheating itself. Just be aware, test your Hellcats with the Wolverines. This one shouldn't be a problem, it's a newer batch. This is one of the prototypes. Yeah, there you go. You can hear that's nice and smooth. Makes a loud hum, but it's smooth. And again, much hotter than Wolverine. So just be aware that they're a higher RPM motor all round. Um, that brings us to the daddy of 2S 180s, the original um, blade, which is, in this case, this is an eSky one. And these are easy to spot because they've actually got the legend marked in here. They've got the Mabuchi symbol. They say one FK 180 SH 3240. This is a very adaptable little motor. Uh, the downside about it versus the MTB ones is that it does have this rather short um, shaft, which is slightly annoying. Um, compared to the MTB ones. Those have got a really nice spec. Um, I've not even tested that one before. But obviously the downside is you can see this pinion. Now this is a B motor and uh, here's its cousin, the A motor. You can see that there are a couple of different, there are two different ones in terms of the pinion position. And obviously you've got to take those pinions off. The best way is to use a pinion puller. Uh, you can't always get a pinion puller in there. And um, I've got a method for doing them with um, a set of long nose pliers which I put in my other motor video. The disadvantages about these is they're hard to find compared to the other ones. Current consumption is not bad, they're about 22 to 25 amp stall. Torque is good, those are generally a good all round 2S motor and they'll produce 10 to 11 DPS as a pusher which is a really good useful range. It's underneath the ceiling for the mags reliably feeding and generally um, is fast enough to be fun. Very quickly when you're choosing motors we're going to group these into voltages. 2S is around the 6 to 7.4 volt or 6 to 8.4 volt range and you can see the, Ryan, the uh, rapid strike motors are 2S and then you've got the artifacts and the banshees which are now dead so we'll have to take those out and then we have 3S motors. 
Strife motors, if you put them on 3S LiPo, can eventually cook. Um, it's recommended to put carbon brushes in those. I've talked about that before. Um, to be honest, if you're going that far, you might as well get rid of the Strife motor altogether and use a Rhino because you've already got a much better performance and a really nice carbon brush in there. So 3S motors, Hellcats. And there's the 2S motors over here in the 180s, the Wolverines in the 3240s. Also, XP 180s should be in there. They're genuinely a 2S motor. Uh, Dean at Blaster Tech has had some long shafts, um, XP 180s, but I think they're too hot to go 3S motor. So I would advise running those on 2S. It's much better. So the advantages of each type. Uh, 2S motors, a 2S pack is physically smaller. That's basically the only advantage. Um, the downside of 2S motors is that um, the law of conservation of energy says what you get out, what you get out is a proportion of what you put in. You're going to have to remember that a 2S motor will consume much more current at a given RPM. And a 3S motor will produce just as much torque and will also use less current because the voltage is higher. So you put a little bit more input voltage into it, it drops the current demands down. So although the packs for 3S are physically bigger, the power consumption of the motors is lower. So there is an advantage to using 3S motors. There's reasons why um, MTB's primary motors are 3S, and that is the main one. So there you have it. There is your basic rundown of those motors. The thing to remember when choosing motors is that there is a golden range of RPMs. So what you're looking for is freewheeling at your, at your required voltage. If you want 2S, you're going to look at 6 to 8.4 volts. Your no load speed should be 28 uh, to 36,000 RPM no load for whatever voltage you want. And you want as much torque as possible. Torque is the king. That's what actually propels the dart. If you're thinking, yeah, I see a 50k motor, more is always more. Uh, you're wrong, I'm afraid. Um, more is not always more. All that happens when you pass beyond about 38,000 to 40,000 RPM, 38 really for the no load speed, is that the flywheel spins, it contacts the foam, it overcomes the friction even on slightly higher crush wheels. Uh, slightly higher crush wheels, you go to the top end of the no load speed, so between 30 and 36. If you go too fast, all that happens is you burn a load of foam and you don't make any more power. Now the use for those motors, for example, if you run one of these Wolverines on 3S, if you really, really want to, is in two-stage builds. People have been doing a lot of work on those. I am not an afterburner fan, to be fair, so I don't generally bother with that kind of thing, but you do want a much higher RPM in your second stage, hence brushless motors. Now the reason there are no brushless motors on here is because I'm not bothering with them at the moment. They're expensive and I'm not convinced that the gains are worth it, um, especially for the kind of games I'm playing, and I haven't seen a truly reliable twin flywheel setup that doesn't destroy the wheels. We're kind of waiting on the flywheel technology on those. And to be honest, if I'm shooting over 150 feet per second, I'm probably going to look at HPA because that's easy to get here. So there you have it. There is your 2017 motor mod guide.